Well, happy February 15, everybody. Hope you're having a great Tuesday morning. And our devotion that is part of our Bible reading plan today, we are in Numbers chapter 35. This will be our last uh, devotion from the book of Numbers, and then we'll move over to the book of Hebrews. Hope you've already read the chapter. This one talks about uh, the cities of refuge, murder, manslaughter, and capital punishment. Um, In verse 6, The cities which you shall give to the Levites shall be the six cities of refuge. Now, uh, in all, the tribes as they uh, settled the promised land were to designate 48 cities for the Levites. Remember, the Levites um, were of the tribe of Levi, and they were the assistants in the tabernacle and later in the temple. Uh, The priests were also Levites, but the priests were descendants of Aaron. The Levites were all of the the descendants of Levi, not just the descendants of Aaron. And uh, so they were the choir, the musicians, the janitors, the helpers uh, in in the worship. And uh, when you get to the New Testament, they didn't all serve. At the same time, they were on a rotating schedule, and so they had to live somewhere and provide for their families. So these cities were designated for them, these 48 cities for the Levites. But of those 48 cities, six of them were designated as cities of refuge. Now, what, what is a city of refuge? These six cities located strategically throughout the country of, of, of Israel once they settled the Promised Land were places that people who were... Uh, charged with or suspected of uh, either murder or manslaughter could flee for safety while awaiting trial. Uh, it would also protect them from revenge. Uh, let's say someone was was died because of murder or manslaughter and their family would want to take vengeance on the on the person they thought had was responsible. Well, so to prevent vengeance, revenge, and to give people a safe place to wait while they were waiting for trial, the cities of refuge were established, um, a different way of doing jail, I guess you could say. And so people could, could flee there, and they were safe there. The cities of refuge were also places where individuals who were convicted of manslaughter. In, in the Old Testament, murder is an intentional act. You intended to kill that person. It was on purpose. It was premeditated. It was planned. Manslaughter, you did not premeditate it. It it could be an accident. It could be something in a moment's fit of rage, but it's not planned. It's not premeditated. And so someone who was convicted of manslaughter uh, would would, would spend their sentence, if you will, in the city of refuge. Uh, A murderer uh, received capital punishment. So they, a murderer, someone charged with murder could be safe in the city of refuge while they awaited trial, but once they were convicted, then they would be executed, capital punishment. But manslaughter, today we, we may sentence someone guilty of manslaughter to prison for five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. What they did was they were banned to these six, one of these six cities of refuge, and they could not leave it. If they went outside that city for any reason, then they were subject to uh, vengeance by the relatives of the person who had died uh, during the manslaughter event. So they had to stay there. So it wasn't really prison, but it was sort of because they 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 were banished from their family and they had to stay in those cities for a period of time. So that's what the the cities of of refuge were all about. Now, a couple of other things in this chapter that I think are lessons for us in our modern world is there is a distinction between murder and manslaughter in Scripture. Um, No one, now listen to this, no one could be executed, no one could receive capital punishment for murder unless there were a minimum of two witnesses. No one could receive capital punishment on the basis of just one eyewitness. There had to be two or more because capital punishment is final. And they wanted God God wanted the Jewish people to be certain. Not not I think so. And so because one person can lie. Well, the more witnesses you have, the harder it is for them all get, to get together and lie. So 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 two two witnesses. Um it also teaches us that revenge is not what God wanted. 
he established the cities of refuge to protect people who were charged with crimes from vengeance. And so taking revenge is not what God wants any of us to do. Um, it also teaches that a nation needs laws and procedures. Uh, they're necessary to have, to have courts. Um, and so there's a biblical basis for that. So everybody knows the rules and we're on the same page. Now, one other interesting thing in closing, look at verses 31 and 32 of, of chapter 35. He talks about a ransom or a bribe, a payoff. He says in verse 31, Moreover, you shall not take the ran- take ransom um, for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death, capital punishment. You shall not take the ransom for him who has fled to, the, to his city of refuge that he may return to live in the land before the death of the priest. In other words, if someone was guilty of murder or they were guilty of manslaughter, um, they th- no one could pay money to avoid the capital punishment or pay money to let them leave the city of refuge and return home. Now, why? Well, that favors the rich. And, and, and so justice would be skewed. I mean, a poor man convicted of manslaughter would have to spend his sentence in the city of refuge, but a rich man could buy his freedom, so to speak. And, and so... In the Old Testament, God does not allow that. And I think even in our country, we we need to pay attention to our systems and are there ways they favor the wealthy over the poor. And and that's a serious biblical issue of justice that we need to give thought to and care about. So those are some of the thoughts uh, from this chapter. And and when I included this in our uh, Bible reading plan, it was for the very reasons I just discussed that I think is important for us to have a biblical basis, a biblical understanding of law, of the difference between manslaughter and murder, that there is a place for capital punishment, but you also have to make certain your system does not favor the rich over the poor and that vengeance vengeance is wrong. And so this chapter deals with a lot of important issues that are still relevant here in America in 2022. So I hope you find this not only interesting, but helpful. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.